Um, so, you join me and Mark, finally, for the 24 session, 24 hour session. Yes. Um, we're at a place called what it, Moss Nuke in St. Helens, is it? Yeah, yeah St. Helens. Helens. Yeah. So, we're here for 20, as I say, 24 hours. And we're just going to really see if we can just snaffle on. I mean, when we booked on, we were literally going to be the only two on the lake, weren't we? And now yeah. we found out this morning that it is fully booked. So it was a good job we got here half an hour early, to be fair, because when we got here, um, we had a little wander around. We met one of the bailiffs. I don't actually know his name to you. Josh, I think his name is. Yeah, Josh. That'll do. So we came, came to these swims, and he, he pointed out one that was really good, which is the one that you, you're in. And then there's one that I'm in, which is next door, called Sunken Island. Um, it was literally, you could not see the water for fish, it was that black with them out there and yeah. as the name suggests of the swim, there's a sunken island in front, it's only about 28-30 yards out. Um, so that's where I am, that's where I'm on. So we're going to see how that produces, so that's that's pretty much about, about the fishing. I mean, there's, there's a bit of work to be done here, they, they've made the channel a lot bigger, so they've done a bit of digging work, so it's a bit of a mess there at the moment. But, um, there's a lot more work and plannings on going. There's going to be a couple of bits of stock and going in. They said there's going to be one thirty pounder and six twenty pounders coming in from somewhere. I don't know where they're coming in. He said from a syndicate, but yeah. we, we didn't ask too much. Yeah, I don't really want to go into it too much with there, but it's you know they've, they've, they, they, he's got they've got plans for this place. It's got um, potential. It's got definitely. mega potential. Yeah, I mean they've, they've done a lot of cultivating, so they've, they've chopped a lot of trees down. A lot um, of digging work. A lot of digging work going on. There's make, meant to be making that channel a lot bigger. They're taking out like a massive chunk of, of, of land uh, and making, creating another island. Yeah. Because um, this used to be two separate lakes. Yeah. This one that we're in, then they used to have a bridge, uh, and obviously, <coughs> then it was the second one down here with the island, which is out of the water that you can actually see. So he's dug the channel now through, so the what, basically two lakes has now become the one. So we're fishing in the right hand side. It's about 15 foot, yeah, yeah, 15 it's foot wide. Yeah, yeah, it's different. And it's, they've got plans, obviously, to make it a lot bigger. So there's a, it's, yeah, it's definitely a work in progress here. Yeah. Um, we'd like, you know, we've had a chat with the bailiff and all that, and, you know, he's explained to me, yeah, don't be fooled by it. It's, it doesn't look the most picturesque at the moment because of all the build and stuff going on and the rubble and the... But you'd expect that, don't you? You know, you know, you'd expect that from people that are working on a lake as well. You know, they can't exactly shut it down to say, right, we need to do this because it could, we don't, they don't know how long it could be shut down for, so... I think... I you know, probably bother with that, Roger. <laughs> so we, we've basically come here today just to get out on a bit of a social together, do a bit of a blog and just see if we can... Maybe, Snaffle a couple of yeah, fish. Yeah, try and catch a couple of fish. Really, they say it's been real high pressure today, like really high. Yeah, it's been quite hot. Like you know, really hot. The sun, the, the sun's been beating down, which means the fish have been on the surface. Floaters are obviously ba floaters abandoned here. No dog biscuits, no bread and stuff like that. So the way it had was zigs, but they weren't interested in nothing. They yeah. were they weren't keen on on taking anything. I had them had the zig out, and it was fish just underneath the surface, and fish were just swimming past it. The bloody nose in it, like, yeah. nah, I don't no, want that. They weren't interested at all, so we're just... But it's, it's, what is it? Well, the other rules as well, there's uh, barbed hooks, you've got to use a barbed hook. Yeah, barbed hooks over there, yeah. Which is rare for anywhere nowadays, really. You think about it, um, I prefer to fish with the barbed hook, because yeah. they're never coming off. Yeah, um, definitely. What other rules are they? It's just, it's, it's just there's, there's not common many rules. Common sense rules, yeah. isn't it? Then, just common sense to have that. But, you know, the, the bailiff here, he knows what he's talking about, and he knows what he likes, and, um, you know, he, want, he wants really good fish care, which is obviously, as you will all know, that we promote that a lot on our page. Yeah. There's something else that we need to we need to um, talk about on here as well is obviously hygiene in the bank and um, obviously with a lot of waterways and water sides and all that kind of stuff and, and leaks as well. Um, there's chance of, of rodents and different vermin to be around, whether it be rats, mice, mink, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, the odd otter. You know, uh, ducks and all that kind of stuff. They all carry like, different diseases, especially rats alone. They carry wheels disease. And if you get that, you will know about it. Yeah. Um, it, it feels the flu at first, then it can put you in hospital. And worst case scenario, I think it can kill you as yeah, well. Yeah, it can actually kill you. Yeah. Um, so you know, hygiene in the bank as well. So like, if, if you're lucky enough to catch a fish, you do your shots and all that. Yeah, you're wetting the fish and all that. So you're covered. You have to be covered in slime and water. You've got to try and be a little bit clean. So just that alcohol gel, just spray it on your hands and. and you know, before you before you prepare your food or cook, or just put your fingers in your mouth generally anywhere near your face, you just need to really protect yourself. It's something that me and Mark both do. Um, 
yes, that, that small alcohol gels. I I I get them from work, so. Yeah, I think I, I think I, <laughs> I think I picked mine from from Aldi. I think mine are from. They're only cheap. And they're only about a quid, aren't they? They're only they're only small. You just throw them in, in in your bag and just you know every time you've touched the water, whether you wash your hands after you've baited up or something, it's just to throw a little bit on. You know what I mean? I wouldn't just be a bit careful when you're doing it, like, and then you're going to touch bait. You know that's when it gets a bit funny because obviously it's alcohol and the smell of it and stuff like that. Yeah, just let your hands completely dry off first. Yeah, basically, yeah, just a bit of common sense, really. But uh, there's not not really else that we need to discuss, is there? No, we're gonna chat more in a bit with you guys about um, the competition, obviously, because we reached the, the goal of 200. Yeah, the goal, basically, the goal and the, our little milestone, really, of getting 200 subscribers on YouTube. So we're gonna run through. That. We're gonna run through all the rules. I'm not happy. I'm gonna spoon them tonight. Using the little spoon. I'm keen for spoonage. <laughs> so um, we've already organised the prize um, for the winner of the competition, which we'll tell you in a bit anyway. But I say at the moment, we're happy where we are. Um, we're fishing, so it's 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 all good, isn't it? Really. All good and good. Let's say uh, let's see if we can snaffle a fish. I need to go put a bobber on, on my right hand rod. Yeah. I, uh, I'll I'll talk to you where I'm fishing in a minute. Um, as will Mark, and we shall go from there. Yeah. So we should talk in a bit. How long, Mark? About a couple of hours. A couple of hours, yeah. Um, and off, off the right hand rod, top of the island, I switched over to a multi rig with a, a white and northern special this time because the bailers were saying white and yellow were working. So, took his advice. Sometimes it's worth taking people's advice, and it just paid dividends really for me this time. I don't think he's very big. What, what do you reckon about? Twelve pound, maybe. Yeah, about twelve pound. Yeah. Say, yeah. Well, I don't it's think it really matters of the weight when it looks like that. To be honest. No, it's a good looking fish. I mean, I was a bit of a cliche saying no, it doesn't matter the size of the fish and all that. But being looking at, it, I'm happy with this one. Um, a few more to come. I open. Mark should be next on the camera. Usually it is Mark first on the camera to be first, but this time it's me. <laughs> yeah. right, I'm just gonna get a bit so, closer for you so you can all yeah, see him. In his glory. Behaving. Right, okay, I'll uh, just explain where the fishing, what I'm doing, and we'll go from there. Right, I uh, on my right hand rod, I'm fishing to a sunken island, as the swim suggests, because it's called sunken island. Um, it's only six and a half, seven rod lengths out, so it's not it's not too far at all, really. So, you can talk about about 30 yards, not, e not even that, probably well, just under 30 yards. Uh, so it's a really comfortable chuck, you can probably underarm it if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, so that's like smack bang on top of the arms, which is about in about two and a half foot of water ish, what the bear reckons. Uh, then it slopes all the way off from there to about 11 foot. Um, and the other rod is on a zig, a four foot zig, it's quite close in. Uh, it's, it's about an inch under the surface. Um, I've had fish literally mouthing away at it. So that's not, I'm not confident in that at all. So that'll be getting changed over soon. That will be going back on a multi rig, which is what the right hand rod's on. Um, you've seen the multi rig, it's the same one I used at Helson Hall. Not the exact same one, but same principle. Multi rig with about well, seven inches worth, um, a size six barbed as real state, barbed uh, curve, sticky sharp tackle curve. And it's got a CC more, uh, what is it? The northern, a white northern special because white's apparently working here, so I thought I'd give that a go. I have got the new sticky bait squid signatures here as well, which absolutely pong. I will not be opening in the bivy, uh, but I've opted to go for those northern specials. I've been sitting in the dairy cream, um, it's like 
they see they've been sitting in the same pot. And what you can see that the white ones and the orange ones in there, they've been sitting in, in that kind of stuff. I've got a session pack uh, about a year and a half ago, something like that. And I thought I got left out of like four things of pop ups, four tubs of pop ups. So you can see I, I absolutely love these. Uh, these are literally my go to bait, my go to pop ups, apart from the squid pink ones. Uh, these just seem to be doing the do for me at the moment. Everywhere I go, seems to be catching on them. So that's, you know, I start, start off the year with that little common, uh, which is a far shelter away now. So caught, caught him on that, caught the other two at bait at um, Hailson Hall, caught that, uh, caught the bream on, and that was a krill one. So yeah, and, uh, and obviously, as you might have seen, the last fish that I caught was on, um, was on that. So. I'll go through, me and Mark will go through the hardware of what we're using in a minute because uh, a, lot, a, lot a lot of you out there have actually asked for you know, they want to see the setups that we have and you know, what we're using and what like, and whatnot. so we'll go through all that we'll go from there right, I've got uh, things to cook, things to drink and I'll get back to you in a minute okay. Right, well I say I've, I've never been to this place before so it's completely new and the bailiff's been around, he's having a good chat with us and all that, so he's given us a bit of, <coughs> a bit of intel, a bit of uh, advice and whatnot. So he's advised me to just obviously just keep an eye on his margin because it's so warm today. High pressures and all that. The fish are moving in the upper layers and in the shallows because it's obviously it's a lot warmer than the water. So what I've done is, with the left hand rod, I'm sure Adam will swing the camera around in a second and show you. With the, <coughs> with the left hand rod, I've just been over to the far, just this margin over here, just this far margin. Go ahead, I think Adam's going to swing it round for you just to show you now. Um, I've been over to this far margin here by the tree. Now there's a, there's a bit of weed and there's some clear spots for them. So what I've done is I went over with a baited bucket, some uh, krill pellets, some chopped boilies and some sweet corn, and baited up there. And then put in, you know, an hour or something. I've seen a common come in and start feeding on the bait. So I thought, well, you know, that's good enough for me really at the end of the day and the reason why I think I've chose that spot more is because of the day we're in today you know it's, it's a lot warmer a lot hotter so the pressure's right up the fish have come up right up in the water so I don't think they're going to be really down deep I've been told there's depths in front of me of about 18 foot um, so at the moment I don't really want to be fishing them sort of depths because they're not they're not there you can see them all on the surface so I've concentrated on marginal stuff more than anything <laughs> at the moment um, on that rod I've just gone for um, a multi-rig um, a size 6 choddy from sticky sharp tackle one of the new signature pink squid pop-ups from sticky baits as well um, I've been basically being told that pinks don't work but I'm gonna go against the grain and try it anyway just in case so plonk that rod just over there scattered a load of boilies around it um, and I'm just hoping that the way of what been watching the fish they've been coming in and following the margin round and then going back out into the deeper water obviously staying on the surface so I don't have to make get, make them do so much effort to go down to feed and I think that's a good little trap to set I haven't got the second rod out yet because I've just been feeling around for the spots obviously but now I've taken on the bailiff's advice and thinking I'm check the weather forecast for tonight. The temperatures are going to drop, so I think the fish are going to drop with it. So I'm going to go down and fish into the 18 foot depth out in front of me. Now Adam's going to swing the camera around now and show you the second spot where I'm going to go. So as you can see now the camera's going to come into, there's a load of rocks out there. You can probably see it just off, yeah? Yeah, on set hard. Just let Adam zoom in on the, on the spot for you. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah rocks, about three, four rod lengths yeah, out from them rocks, drops down to about 18 foot, so it's a sheer drop off, goes straight down. Um, so, what I'm going to do there is I'm going to bait up fish again. There, no? yeah, I'm going to bait up again with the same mixture of pellets, corn, boilies. I'm going to fish another uh, multi rig on top. This time, I'm going to fish not the standard leg clip setup, I'm going to fish a helicopter system with the drop off inland because I'm fishing into weed or round weed beds the last thing I want to do is get the fish snarled up and um, obviously I'm using barbed hooks as well so I want I want to land this fish if I catch one I want to land it so I want to make sure the lead's going to come off nothing's going to get tied up any of the weeds and I think we're going to we're going to be good to go I say 
they're the reasons why I've picked them spots. I've picked one now for you know sort of the the daytime evening time, and I've picked one for the night time. So they're one of the main reasons why we've picked the spots that I have at the moment. So we're going to go for the pop-ups all the way, pink and white I think on both the rods, and just see, just keep my eyes open, watch the water, and we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, here he is. Sitting there, tinkering with his tackle. That's right. Don't make it look like you know what you're doing. That's right, Mark. I'm gonna do. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> right. So a lot, a lot of people have asked. Uh, they want to see the hardware of what I use, like the tackle and bits and bobs, like what me and Mark both use. So. What I've got is, uh, it's only a two rod rule here, so obviously I've got just my two Shimano Tribal Suppressors, I think they are. They were the, the next ones up from, yeah, suppressors. Uh, they were the next ones up from the velocity range. So the really cheap ones that you would have seen everywhere, um, these are the next ones up. Yep. Um, so I've got them. What they, test curve are they? They are 3.25, so three and a quarter test curve. A uh, bit of a beast of a rod to be honest, but got a nice playing action on them. Um, so you did. They are, they are a lovely rod. Good casting rod as well. Yeah, a massively good casting rod. So, uh, like, right, what they are, what they are actually sitting on, that is the Jag Black stage stands with the three rod, well, three rod buzz bars. Um, the butt rest are the Nash. I don't know what I don't know what they're called to be honest. Nash, like that, like the Nash grippers. Like they are Nash lockdowns, aren't they? I'm sure they're called. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, yeah. but you know, they, they, they wrap it. As you can see, they, they, they really wrap around the rod. So. Uh, which you know I really good. I do a lot of snipe fishing, so that is ideal for me. Uh, the reels I've got are the Shimano uh, Black XTDs in fourteen thousand, so and they're a brilliant reel. Um, you know, buttery smooth. Uh, the, the clutch on them. A lot of people don't like the clutch, but I do. I I, I, find, I like it quite a lot. So that's the reels that I have. Um, and then moving up to the alarms, obviously unmistakably they are Delcoms, uh, TXI pluses. Um, so I've got a red, a blue, and the green. And let's see what, what hangers have I got. Oh, these are the, uh, the Fox Black label. Um, I don't know what they're called, but the Fox, Fox Black label ones anyway. But are they the slicks ones? I think they are, yeah. But oh yeah, I've modified them, so I've got, I've got chains on them because every time I get a ball chain, I seem to snap them. Or somehow, but I do. And then I've got just go. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we've come over to my swim now just to have a look at some of the hardware that I'm using at the moment. Um, this is my general all round setup. I only have one setup, you know, I don't have two or three or whatever and stuff like that. So, not like me. No. Um, so, I wanted something that would cover all bases really, from, you know, little pond fishing to, you know, bigger lakes and stuff like that so I went for um, the Nash scopes and uh, nine footers cork handles uh, they're the three and a half, three and a half pound test gear rods which I know might seem a lot to some people but because it's just a small <coughs> a small rod it's quite compact it does have a lot of a good playing action <coughs> I do a lot of snag fishing with these and I rarely bump fish due to the test gear of the rods you know, and I've never had any issues. Plus, then I know I've got the backup for, say, if I wanted to cast solid bags, x amount of yards. I know I've got it anyway. So, um, the rods themselves are sitting on the Matrix Chunky um, two rod buzz bars. Um, I've had them for a while. They're the stainless version, same with the bank sticks. Um, the rear rest that they're on are the Solar uh, Quasi Grip ones. I think they are that I bought, I bought them quite a while ago. Same reason as that, we do a lot of snag fishing so I like to have the rod secured in. Uh, moving up now to the reels, I'm using the Shimano 5500 XTCs. Um, so they're the mini big pits and they're loaded up with uh, 15 pounds uh, Synchro XT line as well. I say, with the type of waters that we tend to fish at the moment, a lot of snags, a lot of weed like we have in here. So we wanted to try and beak up the line. It's low diameter but it's really high breaking strain, so really good casting, really good sinking. So you know an all round good 
general line that I like to use. Moving up to the alarms, I have got old school Nash RS ones. Um, I've had these for donkeys now, I've had them pretty much since they first came out. Um, I've only ever had one ever issue with one of these alarms and I sent it back. I even got to speak to Kevin Nash at the time and he helped me out and sorted me out and I returned it. They returned it back within a week and I had um, a new alarm waiting for me. So they're coupled up with the receiver. Um, the bug uh, hangers to go with them. So really lightweight hangers. I don't need anything too excessive in here at the moment. So they're quite small ones. I think these are midi ones, I'm not too sure. And yeah, that's pretty much general. Yeah, this is the general basic setup that I use for pretty much anywhere. Um, nice, yeah, well, the nice small setup so we can stick it in the back of the car whenever. Um, same net as Adam, um, Nash Dwarf one because I've got the Nash scopes. I've obviously wanted to keep the net down. I went paying out over 100 quid for the net. So I went for the Nash Dwarf one as well. Yeah, that's right. T tight ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, stuck to the same net as Adam. Um, you know, easily packed down, nice and small. So, yeah, that's it. That's it, really. Nice what are you doing? So, with Adam, um, I've got the one of the original Trekker. The V2, haven't you? The V2 ones. So this is the one before all the Aquatex materials came out on the babies and stuff like that. So. Yours is Aquatex, haven't it? <coughs> so I don't think this is Aquatex. This one. Is it not? Is it? Yeah. My my old V2 was Aquatex. Aquatex. The first one was Aquatex as well. All oh, right. Okay. I didn't know. Yes. Yes, it is. Maybe it just needs fab sealing. There you go, kids. You learn something new every day. Yeah, that's true. So that's uh, um, the one man version of that as well. So I've had this baby for a good while now as well. So, and it's been through a lot with me. So what, what, what have you got in there? Have you got, have you got a bed in there? I have got a bed in there. That's the tracker level like bed chair as well with the big snooze and I bought a little quilt to put in there as well because I knew it was going to be gold tonight. Right, the bivy uh, that I'm using as well is pretty similar to Adam's, um, but this is the V2 version, uh, the Aquatex one, uh, one man as well. So as you can see inside, plenty of room. I've got a tracker level light bed chair in there as well with a big snooze, um, sleeping bag, and I brought a, I like to bring a little bit of extra warm, so I brought a cheap blanket as well from the Asda. Um, and that's pretty much it really. I've got a power pack in there uh, for charging my phones and etc. and stuff like that. Uh, same as Adam really, you know, what normally tends to happen with me and Adam is he gets something or I get something, he tries it or I try it and if we like the look of it and we give the heads up to say oh yeah that's a brilliant bit of kit we normally get it like Adam was the first one to buy one of these tracker bivvies I liked it so I went and bought it I sold mine, we got today yeah, the one. yeah exactly so it went in a vicious circle same with like the Coleman's um, I bought the bed chair first, then Adam went on to the bed chair. I think we bought the sleeping bags around the same time and etc. Yeah. and stuff like that. So, so most of my luggage is kept in the Nash Cube uh, ruck hall, which is one of these uh, four compartment system on the ruck halls as well. So I've got uh, bait in one section or like um, cutlery, uh, coffee stuff, etc. Another tackle, uh, head torches in the other. And the last bit is food, uh, just over there as well. So, plenty of supply today by the hungry carper. Yes, hashtag hungry carper indeed. Um, We've also got the fox easy mat. Yes, yeah. just bought that the other week. So I've got myself a new one hooker mat. I liked Adam's one. I liked how easy it was to put up and down and to store away in my garage at the end of the day. So that was it. Yeah, so we're cooking, we're, we're, you know. We're, and we also have, apart, apart from the chair. Yeah, apart from the chair, yeah. The car porter, which is technically mine, but we both use it. Yeah. Because it was a bit of a mission from the car park. Yeah. So this is the rig that I'm using today. Um, it's only about uh, six inches long, as I say. I'm, not, I'm trying to fish the clear spot, so I'm not, I don't really necessarily need to have it too long. But, you know, you don't want it too short where it's all going to get snarled up around the leads and in the weed and stuff like that so um, it's a, the suffix uh, semi stiff um, and it's tied multi rig style so um, overhand loop near the top just to act as a bit of a boom so when it casts out it's got a bit of resistance so it, you know it's, it's pretty much anti-tangle proof uh, done that with a figure of eight loop knot 
um, to the multi-rig itself you know if you don't know how to, to tie a multi-rig you know you can check it up on the internet they're, they're a pretty nifty little rig to use because obviously just two loops isn't it? yeah just two loops and you can change the hooks deadly quick um, that's it I've got a sticky sharp tackle size 6 choddy barb hook on there um, and a little bait screw clear plastic bait screw which runs up alongside the D as you can see here a little um, black rig bead which is on the hook shank of the hook and it's uh, signature squid pink pop up as well so that all goes out that all balances nice and you know nice and freely onto the bottom sits over any debris and say we're fishing uh, lead setup is just what I was using last time when I went to Mescar with Adam um, Nash diffusion uh, rig tubing a couple of blobs of putty um, corder um, leg clip system this is the hybrid one so it's all locked in place so if, I don't want to get snarled up on it, I never do, I want the lead to come off pretty easy and just uh, I think this is a two and a half ounce um, square little square bomb that I'm using as well which is textured as well so it looks pretty much similar to the bottom as well so and so we're going to try and cast this into the spot now and hopefully we can catch it all on film and show you guys what it looks like as well so yeah it is to it so we just popped over just to see Adam quickly um, just no, wanted, my face. Yeah, just wanted to basically give people a bit of an insight really mate, um, why did you decide, I know we've both come down here together, but why did you decide to come down this end of the lake and pick the spots you're fishing on right now? Um, basically, when we came to do a walk around, we, the way this advice was that the swim that you're in was a really good swim, uh, and, the, and the swim was an alright swim. And then we came down here and the amount of fish that I had seen on the surface was unreal. So I was like, I was a bit excited, I got a little bit excited then thinking there's a lot of fish there. And as did Martha as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, like right, it looks like we've done a lap of the lake. It didn't see nothing down the other end, even though it has an island in it, which is definitely something that me and Mark would generally look for. Yeah. Um, well, that we would look for, wouldn't it really? Yeah. So, we literally battled the gear around. Um, Mark asked which way I fancy that I wasn't particularly that bothered, but and which one he wanted, he wanted the next door, so that's fine, and then obviously I was like okay I know where I'm going to fish, it's kind of, it's kind of screaming at me, there's fish all over the surface, there's a sunken island there, as again the name does suggest, um, so found the island, got on top of it, only 28 uh, yards out, so six and a half rod lengths out, something, something along them lines anyway, um, yeah so it's, it was literally the case of finding that spot and, and leaving it there, and then trying to zig obviously for, for the first time, it didn't really produce anything, did it? No, they weren't interested. Yeah, they, they were just literally sunning it up, lapping it up, because let, let's face it, we haven't had many hot days, I'll be really. No. So, that's pretty much why I chose this swim, and in all, in all fairness, it is a pretty sizable swim as well. Yeah. It's nice. quite big, and it's, it's quite warm where it's go around to Mark's swim, and it's like bolted right yeah, on there. Yeah, it's a complete difference from. And Mark's had a coffee and everything. Yeah. I've been, yeah. Sweat, I've been sweating my little, um, well, I've been sweating around here. Yeah. Um. So what baits and stuff are you using today? What are you are you spotting out any baits? Are you putting any freebies out and stuff like that? What sort of how much have you put out now just at the start of the session really? Well, as 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 a rule of thumb, I never put any baits out when I start. Unless I know I'm gonna be there for some some amount of time and I'm targeting some bigger fish. Generally what you do on these sort of waters, well what I sort of do in these waters is there's no point in casting uh, a spot out full of bait onto a spot that might have another kilo or two or three, four, five kilos worth of bait on there from the angle that was here the, the night before. So generally you'd be fishing over old bait, new bait, and then more bait. So there's literally no point in doing that. So I basically found a spot cast of it with a single, which is a single multi-rig, um, which I've shown on the other videos and I, I will show you it again. Um, so yeah, that I've, there's been no bait going in, but I have got a spod mix. Well, when I say spod mix, it's not sloppy or not like that. It's, it's just hemp and boilies. That's all it is. All there's nothing else really in it. Uh, oh yeah, krill meal. Yeah, what boilies are they? Uh, krill. The krill boilies. Yeah, no surprise there really is there anyone like. <coughs> you buy them from the um, Mersey Bait and Tackle Shop, didn't you? Yeah, we went, yep. up the, we went up the other week and we bought all our bait from the pellets, etc. and stuff like that. So, see, so yeah, that's where we got. <coughs> we went up and got our bait from. It's only local. 
Everton. It's only up in here, Thornton, so it's not that far. Yeah, to get it's actually to. on Proof Cross Fish, you've never been, so. Yeah. So Brilliant shop, loads of selection. Yeah. Do a little bit of a plug while I'm here. Yeah. Loads of selections, you know. Yeah, we will, as I say, we will be getting a discount, but the time sort of website out at the moment, which is the reason why we haven't had the discount code just yet. But, um, yeah, they, they have also been kind enough to supply us with the competition prize as well, which yeah. we'll talk about a bit later on. Yeah. So, um, we've gone through all the baits and uh, the tactics and stuff like that. I say you're fishing on top of the island, aren't you? Yeah. Which is roughly, did you say, about two, three foot deep? On yeah, about two, island? two and a half foot deep. Yeah. So, you've just gone at it thinking logically about it, haven't you? And gone for a single bait approach. You thought, well, there's no point in me throwing loads of bait in. I don't want to overcommit to something. I don't want to scare the fish off that are already there. No, so we're really A nice visual. Hook bait, which was uh, what was it? A squid signature? Was it? No, it was um, oh, no, it wasn't, no. a CC more um, dirty cream. Yeah. Yep. And um, what colour was it? Pink. Pink it was as Usual. well. Your favourite. So just a single bright, nice, colourful hook bait with plenty of smell on it. You smell amazing there. If you've never smelt one of the dairy creams, you want to have a really smell, very really sweet uh, aroma to them as well. So you cast out just a single rod, and the less, the least the same you can do at the beginning of the session. Uh, bid you well for later on in the session to say we were here then after Adam cast the rod out for say an hour was it maybe yeah. an hour and a half and um, that rod then went off and we'll, you know we can we'll show you the stills of that um, yeah we can share them in, in a sec when we when we when we put it all in and stuff like that and I say caught a lovely little fish um, probably about 12 to 18 pounds the, the proper stunning little mirror yeah. It's got a frame on it, so it's got, it's got a future that one. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, and I say that that's what I mean. That just shows you guys that are watching this now that you know, a quick bite is you know, there, they're available, is, is there, and yeah, it's, it's ready to go. You know, don't come in thinking oh, I've got I need to put loads and loads of bait out, I need to feed the fish, etc. Because, like Adam said, you don't know what's there already, you don't know what the angle is because you know, this lake's been booked up since yesterday, so we've come on with the same pre pre preconception of that you know there's already bait being put on the swim it's an obvious feature to fish you anyway and obviously the bailer comes around and helps everybody else so we would have said fish on top of the island now with the high pressure that's come through they were there anyway because yeah. they were lapping up the sun they were lapping up them warmer layers of water obviously the sun's warm them top that top third of the water column so the fish are around there so that top of the island covered that water column then for it being really really warm so adam's done the the, the best thing he he possibly could have done throughout a nice single hook bait and you know the goods came didn't they really at the end of the day basically mate. just obviously using your, your eyes and obviously your polarizing glasses as well yeah um, massive edge yeah and by seeing where the fish were you could listen it was so easy to locate and, and know where to put your bait yeah, where the fish are where you put your bait if i could give anyone a bit of advice it would be to own a pair of polarized polarized glasses yeah most um, definitely yeah most you definitely. can get them to your cheapest but you can get them to your cheap I mean, yeah 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 you can you can pay through the nose you can pay a couple of hundred quid for them or, you, or like i don't know i paid about i think i paid about 15 quid for mine yeah i think i paid about 25 quid for my mine of the forces ones mm. the amber lens wrap arounds which is what i'm going to get putting the switch technology yeah up. yeah yeah and these things are amazing they just you can take my glasses off now and look into the water column you can hardly see through the, the, the glare on the surface you put them back on and you can see down virtually to the bottom where it's shallow enough um so uh, you know a recommendation for any of you guys is definitely look at some of the forter stuff but you can pick them up cheaper like adam said you can oh, yeah, pick definitely. them up cheaper i know that some of the supermarkets aldi do fishing gear now and again don't they yeah, and, yeah. They, and they sell polaroid glasses yeah they're, they're all they all go through the you same know? process yeah exactly so yeah uh, definitely get yourself a pair because they are an edge especially for walking around you can see the little spots like we've just found a new little spot just to the right of us here and it's really, really sneaky. It's between all the weeds and we put a bit of bait in and stuff like that. And without the glasses, Adam wouldn't have been able to see where I was casting to then to keep an eye on the spot. And you know, and I couldn't then come round to, to put bait on on top and stuff like that. But also it's worth pointing out there that because it's a margin spot, we could actually see with our glasses, we can see the lake bed. We knew there was no bait there whatsoever, but there was a massive clear spot and it was glowing. Yeah. So it was it's a clear feeding area, so it was like, Let's put some of our, uh, our Spob Mix Man and Mark's Spob Mix Mark's got a, di a, a different moment, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Um, so we, we basically done like a pincer action because it, it's like a like a little, it's like a nib isn't it, it sticks out yeah. this little tree. Yeah. Um, but 
it's it's just it's just screaming for a rig on it. Yeah. So there's one my side and one Mark's side now. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, there's nothing else to do. Ah, there is something else that we can talk about. Yeah. So yeah, we'll stop that now. The bailiff's supplying food. What are you what are you eating there, Mark? The bailiff's pizza. Why is that? Because he offered me <laughs> he offered me something I couldn't refuse. <laughs> Take two. Okay. I absolutely love. Right, so unfortunately, I have just caught. Well, fortunately, sorry, I have just caught um, like a good size, like I'd say 14, 15 pound common. Um, I haven't weighed. I didn't, didn't really weigh. Um, but unfortunately. The uh, microphone didn't pick it up for whatever reason. Um, I'm not too sure, but I still put the footage in um, now, really, uh, just so you can see. Obviously, you won't be able to hear nothing. But basically, yeah, uh, what, what happened was um, it's I think I caught it around about 20 to 22 in the morning. Because we're at 10 past now, so I was all looking for full of of obviously you know wired everything in. Fighting the fish and you know doing the usual and do the pictures and that. Um, yeah, we basically did that with Rogers uh, uh, on the island spot. So I changed over to a CC more dairy cream pop up, a pink one. Uh, yeah, so that, that was just on there. Like six and a half wraps, bang straight out. I cut, threw a couple of bombs on there, probably about five of them maybe with, with hemp and boilies in it and chops and stuff. Uh, that was around about five o'clock, I think it was. Uh, I haven't put no more bait on it since. Got a couple of funny takes on that to be fair. Uh, I had two two massive liners on it. Uh, and I thought that was another liner until they sort of stuck the head up the movie and the, the bottom was like pfft, itched straight up. Um, I've had another like mega liner on, on my right hand rod as well, which is which is peculiar because like, that's the one that's under the tree now. Mark had one about the same time as well, I believe. Lucky enough, Mark was awake in the beta for only just that and nodding off, and he, he walked around and, you know, there was like a harem of people here to see that fish. So, considering the lake's not fishing, hasn't been fishing too well, there's been four fish out today. Uh, I've had two of them. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a good spot that I'm on at the moment, and yeah, let's, uh, let's hope more produce. So, right, until the morning. See you again. Okay, so <coughs> we're here. Well, obviously we're still we're still at uh, Moss New. Um, it's the morning after the night before, essentially. So yeah, I had that one fish last night. Um, I had a couple of liners, and I did have a savage taken. Upon reeling in this morning, um, it looks like I was done, megally done, like, like majorly done. Um, leather discharge and that. Yeah, it? leather discharge. The hook pointed bed over and the. Um, the bait has slid down the shank of the hook on a multi rig. Obviously, if you use it, you'll understand that the bait the just slid down a slight bit. So, they're telling me that. Obviously, I've been picked up and done. So, no wonder that it was a savage tee because it literally picked up the bobbin, hit the top of the rod, and then wobbled all over the place, and that was it. So, it was gone. Um, but, oh, you know, it's fishing, it's one of them things, and I've had two fish, so not being greedy. Um, although, on one spot there is fish bubbling and cruising over. And on the other spot, there has to be a fish bubbling somewhere near. So it's, you know, we've got, I'd say, a little under an hour left. Um, so, yeah, how do you think your session's gone? Well? Mine's, you know, obviously I've, I haven't had no fish, but it's the way I've been fishing and stuff like that. I chose, I gambled on the fish dropping down to deeper water last night. That's why I fished in the big hole in like the 16 to 18 foot depths last night so for the temperatures were going to drop so forth they'll drop right down to there so I baited up 
quite heavily last night on top of it and left one spot in the margin which is where Adam had the take from and the aborted take from and we were just fishing virtually not far from each other but it obviously went homed in on his face so but yeah you know it's been all right it's been it's it's always no matter whether I blank or not I like to to just soak it all in and take me time like I didn't start fishing straight away it took me a good hour, maybe an hour and a half before I even eventually decided to start fishing yesterday. That was after me as well, wasn't it? Yeah, because yeah. I like to just take it all in because it's a new place. I like to see if you can see fish, any signs and stuff like that. So Control which you like Yeah, and then I basically try and educate and guess where the next move, basically, so I can basically try and trap the fish. Because I noticed the fish yesterday were up on the surface or not. I thought, they're going to drop down here. I gambled last night to go to the depths that I did when really I probably should have went more towards the island where it was a bit more shallower and fished a drop to the island where you know you're going from like two foot down slowly 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 or even around the marginal shelf with it but it was so the, the drops are so severe in the margins you know I, I gambled on the depths you know fishing in quite the, de the depths I did last night it just didn't pay off, so I, I, I was confident. I'm confident in the rigs, confidence in the bait. I've got no worries about that. So it's just I was just weighing on fish last night. So unfortunately, I think it's going to be um, a blank session for me. But I've learned it's some. Still cold the water, isn't it? Still yeah, very cold. I've learned. I've learned some stuff. You know, I've learned to, you know, feed on the lead down, especially in that sort of depth. Yeah, we're not used to fishing about 16 to 18 foot, no, are we? So, really? Um, so I've learned about that, feeding it down and um, you know, trying to find the spots in the weeds and just keeping an eye out you know, on the on the water, using a bit more watercraft and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, I, 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 I'm quite. I know I haven't caught a fish, but I'm still quite happy. It's not always about catching fish. It's about being out and enjoying it. Yeah. And as you say, it's not a wasted lesson, not a wasted session because he's learned a little bit as well. So yeah. it's always a plus side when you do that. Yeah. But um, we shall get on to. Um, the competition we've been basically threatening years about for a while now mm. because we've hit the 200 subscribers mark um, we're obviously we're over the moon with that and it, it's a good milestone for us considering we only really started it what about 18 months ago ish something like that mm. it will be two years in november so yeah 18 months ago we started we really started this and at first it was just more of a i don't know on my phone to see what it was like like most people would do on, on youtube and it's um it's just sort of blossomed from there and I would have my camera anyway, but <clears throat> uh, I just learned how to use it through videoing. Um, so uh, we shall go forward with the rules and then I'll tell you what the prize is and so far. Right, we've got, you need to, I've written it all down on the blower. So we need, you need to like and share our Liverpool Carp Facebook page um, and then you need to like and share the Mercy Bates Tackle page as well. So you need to do both of them and then you also need to like and subscribe and preferably try and share the YouTube channel as well and then once you've done all three things then you need to comment done try and do it in capital letters if you can on the YouTube's comment, se uh, comment section and then we'll we, then we will assign you a number uh, essentially so when we see that we'll like it and assign you a number um, and then at the 31st of May so the end the end of next month essentially uh, we will do um, a draw I'll, I'll, put, I'll do it on Facebook and I will comment to the person on YouTube as well so you've got two chances there so ideally I could do with you being on both pages on YouTube and Liverpool Car yeah, page that's, that's why we've stipulated that you're going to have to like and like basically the Facebook page and share it about yeah. as well as the YouTube because you know it all ties in then that we can get in contact with anybody who's um, who wins and Stuff yeah, like that, so. then I can private message it over over the yeah. Facebook, but it needs to be on this blog only. This blog though, only comments on this one done. Um, so obviously we'll see that you've shared the major bait tackle page. We'll see that you've shared our page, and I'll know that you've liked the Liverpool car page because we're going to do a bigger competition, which we'll talk about in a minute. I have to tell you the prize. The prize for this one is uh, donated by uh, Dean and what's his name? Danny. 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 Um, from Major Bait and Tackle, they're giving us um, a kilo of um, high impact boilies. Yeah, high impact boilies, boilies and matching pop ups as well. 
Well, let's be honest, for, for 200 subscribers, that's a pretty good prize, to be honest. Um, so, you know, that, that's up for grabs. So if you're interested in that, if you do all three things, um, and then comment, then we'll give you the number, put you in the draw, say so it's the end of the month, um, and then we'll go from there. But we're going to do a mega prize, hopefully, when we hit a thousand subscribers. I want to hit a thousand subscribers. If we can do it by the end of the year, that'll be fantastic. But the ultimate end goal will be a thousand subscribers. We may do a couple of little ones in between, might we? Like, yeah, we might see. Yeah. At 500, I might give away a couple of pop ups or you know, something like that. Yeah. Like, or, we'll go from there but we'll we'll see what's what but we've had a great response to this little competition and everyone's done a fantastic job of pushing it forward as well because i think when we started we were only on 140 subscribers yeah. and now we're on about 205 or something like that now so um yeah thanks to everyone that's um you know helped us along the way so, so far and helps along along our journey and all right at the moment we don't really get out for a big 24 do we, we don't we don't get out for big sessions but we do our best i don't know if it's a duck or a fish um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna see, just do what we're doing at the moment, aren't we? And we've got nothing planned for well in the in the near future. We, we want to get out again, but we haven't really talked about where we're getting out and what we're doing. No, not yet. Um, I'm absolutely chock a block with work at the moment, so weekends and weekdays. So you know, it's gonna be a little bit as and when. I'm not I'm not even getting out after work at the moment because I've got that much work on. So I'm working pretty much 15 hour days sometimes and it, it just has to be done, yeah. you know. So unfortunately family and work come first before fishing, but fishing is a mega enjoyment of mine. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, to recap on this session, obviously I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. Picking up on two fish, which you didn't expect to get really. Uh, Mark's enjoyed, I've enjoyed fishing with Mark because we haven't, we haven't done a 24 for God knows how long. Over a year now. Well over a year, we haven't really fished like 24 hours together. Yeah. Uh, we fished together through the day, but it's never been Ideally, what we wanted was it. We wanted to do this, this big 24. And Mark said to me, just tell me the date and I'll, I'll get it. So I told him the date and hey, oh, we're here. Um, a little bit on the fishery as well. It's Moss Nuke, it's, it's, a, it's a nice place. It will be. Give it give it a couple of years first because uh, it's a bit like a building site at the moment where we're doing a lot of work to it. Got a lot of big plans for it. Um, I'd say five, five years, five years plus, and this place will be, be nice and established then. There's some nice fish in here though, isn't there? As you'll see from the first fish that I had, that was lovely. The photo of the second fish was, you know, that was a nice common, to be honest. It was a good photo there as well, by the way. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was a lovely fish. But there's some other stunners in there as well, some real old ones. There's like some 30 year old fish in here as well, so. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the future future's pretty good for this I want to give a big thanks to Josh as well, the bailiff that's on here at the moment. He's not on his head off the moment. Yeah, he's still fast asleep. <laughs> but he was up. He came, he, got, he was up at what half one quarter two this morning with the second fish. He, he was round here as well to see the first fish that Adam landed. So he's been here the whole time. He's Holding the lights and everything, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was looking after us. And he was giving us all the advice that we needed and what we wanted, and you know, which is what you expect from a bailiff. If he didn't just go right here, you go take me money, and that's it. You're done. You know, he's looked after us in a sense. So he's given us the oh, heads yeah, up, yeah. all the info that we needed to try and fish effectively in a sense. So it's keen and, as well, isn't he? Yeah, so he's 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 a good lad, he's he's nice to talk to. He's got a lot of knowledge as well. He's fished a, a fair few places as well. That we've fished. So um but yeah so if you ever come down to Moss Nook, then give a shout to Josh, say hello to him and all that. Um make sure you get you get him to get you the Donna Cal's only as well. Yeah, make sure you get him. Good treat that it was. Thanks Josh. Yeah. Um so yeah, so you know, you know, we've we've never been here before. We we were basically trial running this for a, for the a social that we were planning. Um, that may or may not happen. Yeah, just we, yet. we don't know. Yeah, because we're still looking at Millbrook, aren't we? Yeah, we we want to try somewhere else next just to see that because we want to get somewhere where it looks nice, it's picturesque for us all to go to when we decide to plan one. Um, so we'll come up with some options in the near future what we're going to do because it'll probably be around you know the summer time where we're going to do it anyway and give people enough notice so yeah. they can come i know a lot of people said oh, i wish i could have came and you know i, I haven't got now and i'm looking after the kids that weekend or i've got work that weekend and stuff like that so we're going to next time we're going to give people more notice it's only because we've i had to give adam the go ahead to say yeah i can come is why we rushed this one through. We had two weekends for didn't we? We yeah. had this weekend and next. And next weekend. And 
with my missus working um, most evenings and weekends, um, we managed to winkle round it so I could come tonight. So yeah, family didn't have stuff up there, like, and I, I help yeah. out big time, like. Yeah, you know. So just quickly before this battery dies, start. Well, thanks for watching, and if you like what you're seeing, then like, subscribe, and share to everything that we've got going on at the moment. Don't forget to look at our competition rules, um, and if you're interested in the, in the competition, then there's the real state. And hopefully we'll see you in the bank sometime. Yeah.